Welcome back, Tom Hoffman here with you. While we tweeted it out, we put it on our Facebook page. Uh, we've got to get it up on our uh, on our uh, on our homepage. That's the, I think that's the one thing I forgot to do is get the information off to Sue, or maybe Louise is taking care of it. Anyhow, the information about we have a new movie out. It is uh, it's a ten minutes long. It's a short a short piece. It's called Last Hours, and we interviewed a variety of uh, scientists about extinctions. An extinction is when more than half of all life on Earth dies. And so let me just share with you, and, and by the way, here's this endorsement for the movie just came in. Um, where did it go? Huh. Somehow I have uh, lost it. Um, anyhow, I've, I, I'll find it as... I, Here we go. No, that's, yeah. Carbon pollution from burning fossil fuels. This is Al Gore. Carbon pollution from burning fossil fuels is changing our climate and transforming our world from more destructive and more frequent climate-related extreme weather events and rising sea levels to climate refugees, crop failure, and water scarcity. The consequences are profound. Last Hours expertly explains how we got here and what will happen if we don't work together to stop it? It is a needed and urgent call to action. Al Gore, former Vice President of the United States, and currently Chairman of the Climate Reality Project. So here's how the movie starts. Consider this. Nearly all life on Earth could go extinct because of man-made climate change. It's hard to imagine Earth without life. We take life for granted, but life has not always flourished here. The Earth has experienced dramatic loss of life, or what we call mass extinctions, five times over the course of geologic history. Each one of these events has resulted in the loss of more than half of all life on Earth. And the largest and most devastating of all was the Permian mass extinction, almost all life on Earth disappeared. Uh, yeah, Permian mass extinction is, in essence, just the greatest crisis that uh, life on Earth has, has ever suffered. By the end of the Permian mass extinction, 95% of all life on the planet was dead. And why is this important today? Because today, a sixth extinction is underway, one that will test the survival of not just human civilization, but possibly of the human species itself. And it bears a horrifying resemblance to several previous global warming-driven events, like the Permian mass extinction. I think it is certainly extremely significant that a lot of the main crises of the past are associated with global warming, and so with obvious implications for um, the present day. When we think of extinctions, we think of the dinosaur-killing KT mass extinction, which was triggered by a sudden catastrophic collision with a meteorite. But the most deadly force behind all extinctions isn't from outer space. It's from underground, underwater, and under the ice, where trillions of tons of carbon lies in wait in the form of frozen methane. If this methane melts and is released into the atmosphere, it will produce a sudden and massive global warming. During the Permian mass extinction, Greenhouse gases were released by volcanic eruptions in an area that is today called the Siberian Traps. These, along with the heat from the lava flow itself, warmed the atmosphere of the Earth by at least six degrees Celsius. That much global warming took a huge toll on land, animals, and plants, but far worse, it warmed the oceans enough that methane, frozen deep under the sea, melted and was released into the atmosphere. That enormous release of methane, a powerful greenhouse gas, pretty much doubled the level of global warming and killed off over 95% of all life, both on Earth and in the seas. It's a kind of a scary thought, but maybe one of the best geological analogs for 
the kinds of rapid changes in climate and CO2 in the atmosphere that we're going to witness now and for the next few centuries, potentially, is this end Permian time when, um, as you know, that culminated in one of the largest mass extinctions that we know of. And of course, looking at these ancient events uh, shows us times of global warming and the atmosphere doesn't care whether the carbon dioxide comes from uh, uh, human activity uh, or from a volcano. It, it has the same end effects. The numbers are very similar from some of these giant lava flows in Siberia. The, the amount of carbon dioxide they release is very similar to the, the sort of fossil fuel burning um, carbon dioxide release that we're, we're, we're doing sort of decade after decade today. Today, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is above 400 parts per million a level not seen any time in the history of human life on Earth. We are increasing uh, CO2 levels in the atmosphere at rates far greater than any of the most rapid events that happened in the deep geological past. Uh, there is no precedent uh, for what we are doing to the atmosphere. It is an uncontrolled experiment. As that was Dr. Michael Mann. We will uh, pick up the, uh, the last half of the video right after the break. But the point that we're making here uh, and, and prior to that, there were three other scientists. Um, the point that we're making here is that there is a time bomb frozen in the seas and in the permafrost. Uh, this time bomb is called methane. We know of methane as natural gas. Methane is the result of the decomposition of plant matter. Over tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of years, and there are these beds of what's called methane clathrate or methane hydrate, these beds of frozen methane that are somewhere between 4 trillion tons and 10 trillion tons of methane around the world. An estimated 2.5 trillion tons in the Arctic. If you melt 2 trillion tons of methane, you have a mass extinction. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. So the question is, if we warm, how, how much must we warm the world before the oceans start melting that methane? And then it's too late. 